Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back from lunch. I hope you all had a good, good tummy filling. After lunch is always the hardest slot to speak for. You've got to be enthralling to keep everybody from falling asleep. That's why we have Havard from Troll Tech today. As you know, KDE is built on a giant community of wonderful contributors. And Aaron showed you that block diagram that includes cute. QT? How it's called cute. It's called cute. Well, thank you for informing me. So our next speaker, Havard Nord of Troll Tech. Give him a, give him a hand. Thank, um, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, my name is Havard Nord, Hovard in, in Norwegian. So I'm the, um, one of the two founders of Troll Tech. I'm the CEO of Troll Tech. I've been living in Palo Alto for eight years now. So I, I'm working at this office. So this is a very nice and short drive for me. First of all, I want to congratulate KDE on the release four. Uh, we've been waiting for that for a very, very long time, like the rest of you. And what I want to talk about today is uh, the special relationship between uh, KDE and, and Trolltech. Um, a re relationship that has resulted in, in many great things. Um, to illustrate that relationship, I, I chose a, a picture of uh, a fish, I don't know if you know what kind of fish that is. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's, that's a clownfish. And, and um, the clownfish has a special relationship with the sea anemone. Uh, the sea anemone is normally poisonous for all other fish, but um, the, uh, the clownfish is adapted to swing among uh, the sea anemone, and both of them, they, uh, they nurture and, and protect each other. And this is, in a way, how the relationship between KDE and, and Trolltech works. So I'm going to try to use this remote. <laughs> okay, okay, let's forget about the remote. So, um, back in the heyday of, of, um, of Linux, uh, Linux on the desktop, this, this was uh, in the pioneering times of, of Linux. People really didn't uh, uh, use the web. They uh, they use uh, they use, they read Usenet. Um, I, I read Usenet every day, and I could see um, announcements coming, um, like uh, like an announcement that that came up on on 14th of October uh, in 96. This was approximately, I think, around the same time that that Google was founded. So so it it, it gives you uh, some some perspective and. And every day there were about 10 projects uh, announced and uh, lots of people who had great ideas about what they wanted to do and they wanted programmers to, to sign up. So there was one such announcement um, that I, I read. Um, let's just check. So uh, the announcement was about creating a, a better desktop. When you look back um, at the typical Linux desktop in 1996, it looked something like, like this. Actually, this is not entirely correct because uh, more typically you would have Emacs running uh, in another uh, extern window. Uh, or, most people, they wouldn't actually use a calculator, they, they would use BC. So this was the state of the Linux desktop back, back then. And no wonder that you didn't have any fancy user interfaces because look at the development tools you had. These, these are Athena widgets. And, and uh, at, at the time, this was a state of the art in, in, in user interface widgets. And also, if you wanted to create some custom widgets, um, um, that was really, really difficult. Um, myself, I'm an old uh, C and C++ developer, and I never embarked on the trip of even trying to learn how to create those, those widgets. I, I, I thought that was way too difficult for, for me. So no wonder that the desktop was very primitive. So Matthias, um, he wanted programmers for his, his vision about um, the KDE. Uh, at the time, he called it cool desktop environment. And this was his vision. He wanted a graphical user interface for, for end users. 
it didn't want like an, a, a raw X11 UI or a Motif UI. He wanted a system that was easy to use to browse the web, to send emails, read emails, uh, play games, and, and so on. Uh, it all started uh, with Matthias trying to install Linux and a Linux desktop for his girlfriend. And even he had huge problems with that. So, uh, the biggest challenge that, that Matthias saw was that to write a very simple application, just something like this, uh, a, hello type, a hello world type of application, it took about 200 lines of code or, or even more. And if you wanted to create a real complex application using these, these frameworks, it was much, much harder. So, in order to create a desktop alternative to what these guys had come up with, called Windows, he decided um, to use a development tool from these guys. <laughs> so, so believe me, we had much more fun than, uh, than the Microsoft guys. <laughs> and no, we didn't always drink beer when, when we programmed, but sometimes it helped. <laughs> so shortly about Trolltech. Um, to give you a background, how, how many of you are familiar with the company? Oh yeah, quite, quite, a, quite a few. So Trolltech is a, a software, uh, it's a software company uh, built by software engineers. We're really, really technical. Um, uh, the one guy there is, is, is Eric Sean Beng, and, and it's, it's me, and, and we were sitting on a park bench one day, and, and we needed to create a, an advanced application and run it on uh, Windows, Linux, and, and Macintosh, and, and we looked at all the development frameworks out there, and we thought they are not sufficient, so we decided we have to create our own, and, uh, and we had the vision that, okay, we're going to create the best uh, software development tool on, on, on the planet. So this is what we, uh, we, what we started on uh, back in 1994, and many years after today, um, <clears throat> We are a public company. We're about 250 people um, working for the company, more than 5,000 customers, and um, uh, hundreds of thousands of open source developers throughout the world. And we have a, a bunch of offices around the world. So that's, that's very briefly about the company. And the products we make are, um, it is a Qt framework. This is, this is our main business. That's 80% of our business. On top of the Qt framework, we created um, something called Qtopia uh, platform. And uh, using this technology, it's, it's possible to create applications that can run across any operating system and any device. So that is really what, what Trolltech is, is doing. Most of our customers, they, uh, they actually pay us to create applications for Microsoft Windows and, and not Linux. What sets Trolltech apart from other companies is that um, we have a, a unique licensing model. Um, it's similar to the, the MySQL um, licensing model. It's, it's called dual licensing. So we, um, we have the product, the same product that we license under two different licenses. It's a GPL license. Um, you can use it for free. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, the only thing we ask in return is that you share whatever you produce with, with the community. So whatever you create with the GPL license, it becomes GPL. And then uh, there's a commercial license that does not have this limitation. And, and, and um, many companies, they don't want to write and publish G uh, GPL code, so they uh, choose to pay us for the commercial license. So it's, it's very, very simple. Often we, uh, we use this, this, uh, this uh, figure to show how, how it works. So we, um, we are a bunch of engineers. We, we develop a product. We release uh, beta versions. Actually, we release snapshots every night. Then uh, uh, the community um, downloads it, tries it out, adopts it, and gives us tons of feedback. So that gives us um, uh, faster stabilization of the source code than for other uh, typical commercial uh, frameworks, uh, which we then sell to our customers. Our customers pay us, that funds the development, and, and so on, and so forth. 
So we are funded by, com uh, by commercial companies, like Sk Skype is w one example. Um, uh, you also probably know that Google Earth uh, is built using Qt, so that allows Google Earth to run on, on Windows, Mac, and the Linux desktop. Uh, Adobe is also one customer. And that allows us to uh, create this commercial framework and uh, give it to uh, people creating free software. Um, and KDE is their the biggest user. So, um, so now about uh, the symbiosis between uh, KDE and Trolltech. KDE is extremely important for Trolltech. Uh, Without KDE, Trolltech would be tiny tech or something. We would be a very small company compared to what we are uh, today. I can give you some examples. A lot of our customers uh, in the early days, uh, uh, 90 to, to 95% of our customers, they, they heard about us through KDE. Um, for the first six years running the business, we, we didn't have any salespeople. We had a fax machine that that received orders. We didn't have any marketing people at, at all. Uh, of course, KDE's adoption of Qt, it gives us uh, uh, lots of credibility in the industry. We are a, a de facto Linux standard. We get uh, tons of, of uh, bug reports, of, of feedbacks, of ideas, uh, suggestions, uh, contributions, and, and so on from the community that helps make the product a much better one. And it also goes the other way that um, we also um, uh, help KDE. KDE benefits from, from what, from what Trolltech is, is doing. So, so we deliver a commercial uh, quality tool. Um, we have um, a staff of um, a little over 100 uh, engineers cranking out code. Um, also a lot of support people. And sometimes when building frameworks, uh, you have to do the real boring stuff, um, and not only the fun stuff. And, and what you often find in, in free software projects, people tend to gravitate toward what's fun and challenging. Nobody really wants to do the, the boring, uh, boring work. Uh, we have to do that. Uh, we sponsor KDE uh, developers. We also have uh, uh, programmers on staff uh, working on KDE. Um, KDE developers, they have a hotline uh, to Trolltech um, if, if there's something that, that bugs them, if there's some, something they want to get into Qt, uh, they, they call up our developer, or actually they email. Um, and um, we often uh, put features in that that KDE uh, need. And they influence the Qt releases a lot. We also cooperate on, um, uh, on uh, several projects Phonon, the multimedia framework, is, is, uh, is one of them. Well, um, as you may imagine, uh, not everybody likes uh, an alliance where uh, you have a free, um, free software project teaming up with a company uh, because uh, uh, to, to some people, companies are inherently evil. Um, um, and, you know, we, we see and hear things like, like, like that. And, uh, 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 and people ask us to, uh, okay, the only way I can use your framework is if you give it away for free. Uh, sorry, but that's a business model that's not working for us. Um, it's really good that the, uh, that, uh, the framework is a profit center. Uh, because then we have a financial incentive to work on it and, and fix it. This has been working for uh, 14 years now, and I think it's going to continue to work for 14 more years. But there, there is a danger here. Uh, there is a danger that um, companies could turn evil, uh, that Eric and I could be run over by a bus, that Microsoft could buy a Trolltech and, and pull the GPL. There, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, bad stuff that, that can happen. So um, in order for, 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 for us to work uh, together with, with, uh, with KDE, we have to build mutual trust. Um, this, this started uh, by uh, us open sourcing 
uh, Qt um, using the QPL license in, in 98. Uh, before that, we had a kind of quasi-free uh, free license. Um, uh, but but uh, a lot of people were still concerned that we could just terminate that license or, or, or fork, so we would have a, like a better commercial uh, version. Um, so we designed uh, a poison pill. Uh, this poison pill uh, is, is for ourselves or if it, it's for uh, an evil takeover of, of Trolltech um, that says if you stop development of, of Qt, if you try to sort of pull the license, change the license, uh, this foundation will make sure that Qt gets completely free under a BSD license. And that seemed to, to settle things. Well, not completely because there were, there were still some, uh, some problems with uh, uh, the QPL versus the GPL and, uh, and license, uh, uh, some license incompatibilities. So we uh, GPL licensed Qt in, in 2000. And um, we'll have a reinforced uh, commitment uh, in 2008, actually in about uh, 15 minutes, 10 minutes you're going to hear about that. Um, okay, um, so about KDE4 and, and Qt4, I told a lot about the past now and license conflicts and, and so on. So, so what does that imply? Uh, so I've been waiting to see KDE4 for, for a very, very long time. We worked many years on, on Qt4 and Qt4 is a major upgrade of Qt3. And we were very proud to come out with Qt4, and we were then starting the count on when is, is KD going to adopt uh, all of these great features. These are some of the things that, uh, that KDE4 can and uh, does benefit from. Uh, so Qt4 compared to Qt3, is, it's a major, major upgrade of the framework. A lot of, uh, a lot of the framework was, was completely redesigned and, and uh, re-implemented. We have uh, a bunch of improvements in, in many areas, far uh, too many to, to mention here. Um, one thing I, I, I would like to, to, to uh, mention though is the, uh, the focus on performance because frankly Q3 sucked uh, in terms of performance, not on a desktop but on uh, low power devices like phones and, and mobile devices and um, if you remember the, the, the slides I, I showed earlier on, on the, the roadmap and how all the products uh, um, are related to each other, um, it's important for us to create one framework that lets developers create applications that can run on any operating system, any device, right? So Qt4 must be fast enough to run on, on phones. Um, so we've been focusing a lot on performance and increasing the performance and uh, we still have lots of work ahead of us to increase the performance. And KDE is definitely going to benefit from, from this. Um, we have a graphics engine that uh, it doesn't even resemble the graphics engine in, in Qt3. It's, it's a graphics engine on, on stereos. Everything that you ever dreamt about is, is there. Uh, it's uh, much improved uh, user interface and theming, um, uh, things like cascading style sheets. Uh, it will make it, uh, and it does make it much easier to, to customize the, the desktop. Um, one area that uh, we have been working on for more than a year is we are integrating uh, a KHTML um, it's now called WebKit. It's a web, big WebKit project that, that uh, I think Google is supporting, Apple, uh, uh, Nokia, Motorola, and a bunch of companies are, are supporting this. So we are uh, merging WebKit into, into Qt. And uh, we are seeing a future where applications are not only going to be native C++ applications, but we're seeing that they're going to be a mashup of um, web 2.0, like AJAX style of programming and native uh, components. We think that the combination of native and, and web mashup will uh, create the most powerful applications. So this is, uh, this is where, where we're headed. Then it's a phone on multimedia framework. 
is uh, becoming part of Qt in the, in the next release of, of Qt. Um, finally, I, I'd like to mention uh, some of the, uh, the opportunities uh, that, that I, I personally uh, see for, for KDE, and many of these things are, are worked on, and this, many of these things are, are what, what uh, KDE is, is, is now doing. Um, so I, some of the things here are, <clears throat> there's an indu industry trend moving really away from uh, just a plain user interface, talking about user experience. Um, it's about how, uh, how people interact with applications and, and information. Um, uh, I've seen uh, some of the new uh, user interfaces in KD, and, and, and this, is, this is very, very exciting. It's not only about UI and glitzy buttons any longer, but it's how the users interact uh, with, with the user interface. So that's an area where a lot of innovation can be made. Um, I also hope to see, and I, I heard there were, were demos, um, of bringing the KDE experience to, uh, to any desktop, but also to any, uh, any sort of device. Um, one of the things we are working on, is we're bringing Qt to Windows Mobile, uh, so that uh, potentially uh, KDE could, could be brought over to, to Windows Mobile devices. And um, a third thing would be to ex uh, expand the developer community. Um, I, I don't actually know exactly how many of the KDE developers are doing C++, but I suspect it's still the majority, is it? So when you look at the rest of the world out there, uh, there's a bunch of uh, Web 2.0 developers, uh, Java developers. Uh, the tools are there. Uh, the technology is there uh, to bring this over to, to KDE. Uh, I, I think uh, KDE could have great visibility as a development platform for these types of developers. That could expand uh, the developer community a lot. Okay, um, so we're going to give you guys a pre-announcement. Um, we are coming out with a press release on Monday, and uh, you see it here first. So we uh, have decided with immediate effect to release Qt under GPL2. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, I think the, actually the snapshots tonight uh, will release Qt under uh, a GPL version 3, and uh, uh, we want to react very quickly to, to license changes. Um, so uh, this was about the fastest we, we, we could do, but I think this will be very good for, for KDE. It will also be very good for other open source projects. Um, of course, we will keep Qt license under GPL version 2 as well. And um, uh, some people are happy to hear that. Richard Stallman, he says, uh, uh, this is a guy from Free Software Foundation, I'm sure you know him. Uh, he's very happy to, to, to hear that, that Qt is available under GPL version 3. And he thinks this is great for, for, for KDE. Um, so that is really all I had to say today. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy the party. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, would you like to take some questions, Harvard? Yeah, that looks good, yeah. Ho ho Turn on the mic again. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sorry. Uh, these were actually his quotes, uh, not quotes that our marketing people made up. <laughs> actually, they made up his quote, but these came back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hi. At first, let me congratulate uh, with your company. Uh, I, I am following your company from some various years. And uh, my question is very simple. This is about the latest gadget you have. This is about the phone. My question is uh, the phone. The phone? The phone. Yeah. Uh, where I can take the, the phone you, do, you, do, you, do you develop? 
Oh, uh, you're talking, uh, you're asking about the green phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The green phone, we are uh, retired already. Uh, we made a thousand green phones and we sold them out uh, to, to companies, do, uh, uh, companies doing uh, phone development and, and some operators. Uh, we also gave, uh, gave away a number of phones uh, to, to uh, free software projects. Um, so we're a software company, we're, we're not doing phones. Um, <coughs> being in the hardware business is really difficult, uh, but we have, uh, we have Qtopia also available for the Neophone. So you can get a, a Neophone and you can download all, all the source code. Of course, Qtopia is also GPL. Neo, yeah, that's, uh, that's an open Moco phone, and that's available for sale. Uh, speaking about platforms, will, will or is already queued for Windows CE uh, under GPL? So we have uh, we have a technical preview of of Qt for Windows CE. Uh, I don't believe that is under uh, under GPL. I think we may have a special license there for the preview. I'm actually not sure. Uh, of, of course, that that's going to be under GPL as well. Uh, another thing would be a, like a PR suicide. <laughs> Other questions? Other questions? No? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>